Hello, Gavin here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at everything you need in your gig bag. So with rehearsal studios opening back up and talk of gigs returning really soon, I thought now was a good time to cover everything you need to have in your gig bag. And while many of you probably have your own lists of things you like to have in your gig bags, if you've been a working professional or gigging regularly before the lockdown, there's actually been quite a lot of bass players start playing during the lockdown. I've seen on a lot of Facebook forums and things like that that there's a lot of bass players getting started and looking to start gigging now that these things are returning. So with that in mind, I've put this video together covering everything you need to have in your gig bag. But there's also some things for the working professionals and weekend warriors who are just coming back to gigging after the break that might give you some extra brownie points with the band. So let's get stuck into that now. So first up, what kind of gig bag do you need? There seems to be all sorts of cases on the market, all aimed at different things, and some of them are really, really good. You get everything from the thinner gig bags that come with instruments. They're okay, they're not gonna provide lots of protection for your instrument, but they'll do the job to an extent. So if you're just going to band practice, that should cover that. But using that regularly, it's not gonna provide a lot of protection. So the other option typically is a hard case. They do come with their own drawbacks though. They're usually very heavy, a little bit bulky, and they don't have that much in the way of storage compartments, typically compared to some of the modern gig bags. But now we also have this style of gig bag. This is like the perfect middle ground between a hard case and a gig bag. It's really light, got straps on the back so you can wear it like a backpack, has a nice pocket on the front of it that's big enough for you to fit quite a lot of things in it. We'll actually come back to that in a little bit. But what makes these so much better than the gig bags that come with your instruments is that they're hard. They're not the soft gig bags that can be rolled up and put into storage. They've actually got hard foam in them. The padding's a lot more rigid than what you would get in a normal gig bag. So it offers a lot more protection. They do typically also have a neck brace inside it as well, which will keep the instrument held in place. And these don't have to be expensive. You do get expensive ones. Um, and they will be really high-end. In mono cases, they make some really nice ones, and loads of other brands. But these ones, the TGI ones, I think these are sub £50 at the time of filming this. So I highly recommend checking these out if you want a really nice case that doesn't cost a lot of money. But while I said there was the front pocket that has a lot of room in it, you might find that when you want to take all the things I'm going to talk about in this video, having a small rucksack or a small bag of some sort could be really useful. Having an extra bag that keeps these things separate could just be a little bit easier to work with. But ultimately, you just have to find what works best for you with your setup. So what do we need to take to the gig with us, whether it's in the gig bag or in a rucksack? Well, the first thing is cables. I know we all have at least one cable that we take with us to rehearsals or if you're practicing at home, but really you need to have a spare cable. For example, this is my main cable that plugs into my bass has a silent switching jack and it's made by Practical Patch like everything that I use. I should say as well, none of this equipment that's used in this video is sponsored in any way. It's just the stuff that I found that I personally like to use over time. But there's always going to be different versions of everything I work through, so you find what works best for you. But for me, Practical Patch cables. But like I was saying, this one has a silent switching jack on it. And I love this cable, that is perfect for gigging for me. But I always take a couple more cables, like this, with me as spares, because you never know when a cable could go bad on a gig. They get stood on, even if you're really careful, things can go wrong. So it's always good to have at least one spare cable in your gig bag. But also I highly recommend some of these. These are just velcro tabs that go around the cable and help keep it secure. So it means you don't end up with that rat's nest of cables when you start playing a show. Then after that we need to think about power. You see, if you have a tuner pedal, a clip-on tuner, or you've got a couple of pedals on your board, you're going to need to power them. And you might have a power supply on your pedal board, which is perfect. But you always need to have a backup plan, because these things, as good as they are, can fail. So for some, that means having simple 9 volt power supplies, and that works fine. Or maybe a power bank, or something like that. For me, I like to have a few 9 volt batteries spare, but really you just need to make sure you have a spare of whatever batteries you're using. But then I also go a step further than that. I like to have some of these. So this is a battery pack. 
it uses a 9 volt battery inside on a little battery snap. It's really just a box for your 9 volt battery. But it has a switch to turn it off and on and an outlet to plug it into a pedal. This just makes life so much easier than trying to fit batteries inside pedals. Just takes all of the stress out of that. Have that beside your board if it goes wrong, plug it in. Makes life so much easier. But we did just mention clip-on tuners and these work great and I recommend having one of these as a spare in your gig bag. For me, I'm always using a Korg pitch black tuner on my pedal board. Love them, I've used them for a long time and more importantly, in the acts I've worked with, they've been the most common tuner we've used. I know for many it's the boss one, but this was the standard for a lot of the bands I worked with, so it was the right tuner for me. But these things can go wrong, and depending on what you're doing, it might be a bit of a hassle to go changing this if it goes wrong. If that's the case, stick the tuner on the headstock and you're good to go. Problem solved. There's a few other instrument things as well that are just good to have in your gig bag. For example, having a good strap. Always make sure you have your strap in your gig bag. I know that maybe seems a bit obvious, but you'd be surprised how many times you could forget to put this in your bag. So always make sure you have this before you leave the house. As well as that, you also have strings, which for bass gets a bit interesting because I always make sure I have a spare set of brand new round wound strings if I'm using round wounds on the gig because you want to have nice good strings if you need to change one. So that's always in my gig bag. But if I'm using flat wounds, brand new flat wounds won't sit right, they won't sound right if you mix that in with the old ones on your bass. For example, I have my Fender Jazz bass and that has, mm, strings are maybe two years old on that. So if I was to put a brand new flat wound string on that, it would sound very different to the others. So for that, I make sure I have spare old strings. For me, that's easy because I change the strings on my fretless regularly. So I keep the old strings from my fretless to put them on the Fender if one ever breaks. So highly recommend doing that if you're in a situation to do that. If you're not that bothered about them sounding played in, you could have a brand new set of flat wounds, or you could even keep tape wounds as spares, because they sound played in already. So that shouldn't be quite as extreme a difference if you have really old flat wounds. And this is your first bonus brownie points tip for with the band. I always keep a spare set of guitar strings in my gig bag, because I've had it happen to me. You've been on a gig and a guitarist has broken a string and doesn't have access to spare strings right at that moment. If you have these in your gig bag, you can save the show. I actually also keep mandolin strings in my gig bag because I used to work with bluegrass acts. Thankfully, I never had to use these, but always kept these spare and you never know when you could save the day with that. On that same point, it doesn't hurt to keep a capo in your gig bag if you have one. Again, you could save a guitarist's life if they've forgotten theirs for the gig. And I also keep a slide, because again, it could be that you're working with a band that uses them and they've just forgot theirs, or dropped it or lost it. These things happen, so I always keep those spare in my gig bag. Again, this might not be specific to the other band members, but always make sure you have some plectrums. For me, I use picks live, depending on what songs I'm playing, so I always have my selection of picks in a box ready to go. This is actually an old headphone box that works perfectly, but having something like that at the gig doesn't hurt or at rehearsals. And always make sure you've got a few of whatever plectrum you use. If you use plectrums and you have a certain type you like, for me personally I always have 10 to 12 of them in a box, just make sure you've got a few because you're guaranteed that live or in a rehearsal room you're going to drop some. But for me I also make sure I have them even if I'm not using plectrums, again just as a gig saver if someone in the band forgets theirs. Some other good things to have for your instrument are a guitar stand. Now you don't have to have a big bulky stand, you could keep that separate if you have one of those. For me, I like to have things like this. Just a fold up guitar stand that folds into a nice little stand you could take to the gig or rehearsal room, but folds up really compact, really quickly for storage. So that's really cool to have if you can find one. You do get fancier versions of this, but you can get them really affordably as well. Another good thing to have as a bass player is just some form of cloth. Just take it in your gig bag. For one thing, it's to wipe your strings down because your instrument can get kind of gross because you sweat, well, if you're anything like me, you probably sweat a lot while you're playing. 
so it just stops your instrument getting too gross after a gig. But it can also be a good thing if you're in a studio, because we're often needing to get muted bass sounds. So something like this jammed under the strings, it'll give you that old school Motown vibe. Another couple of things for your instrument to keep are some tools. It doesn't have to be lots of tools, really you need Allen keys for adjusting your bridge in the neck, and a couple of screwdrivers. But things like a small socket to tighten up, uh, jack sockets, things like that, always come in handy. So I recommend having a multi-tool like this. This is the Ibanez one, and this has got, I think, 10 tools attached. It's got a ruler for adjusting your action and things like that. Different Allen keys, screwdrivers, even a wee socket just for tightening things up. And that's a really cool thing to have. These are only about £15 in the UK, so highly recommend something like this. And also a string winder. So a string winder is going to make changing strings so much quicker. I know that maybe sounds a bit gimmicky, but it really does speed up the process. And if you get a good one like these Daddario Planet Waves ones, you get bridge pin pullers for acoustic instruments, and you get snips on the other end for cutting the strings, again making it much easier to change a string really quick on a gig. And something on a much more serious note that you need to keep in your gig bag. I didn't do this for a long time and I've had hearing issues as a result, and I know a lot of guys who have really serious hearing issues from not wearing earplugs at gigs. Yeah, they don't sound great, they really don't sound great, but it protects your hearing so much that you really can't take the risk of not wearing them. For me, I'm using the Alpine ones, and these are great. I can't remember what filter strength these are, but that's something you should really look into. These Alpine ones come with different filter strengths, I don't know what exactly they were, it's been so long since I bought these. But they go from low decibel roll-offs to a really high decibel roll-off. So you can do different amounts of protection for your hearing. And you also have a string attachment as well, which stops you dropping one if you're on a gig. I love having that because I could pull them out at a moment for speaking to someone, put them back in and don't have to worry about dropping them. But regardless of what hearing protection you go for, I'd highly recommend having it because it could save your hearing. The more gigs you do at high volume, you're guaranteeing that you're going to hurt your ears. I even sometimes take these for gigs if I'm going to listen to a band, because it just takes the edge off of it. Again, that comes down to your filter size. The filter strength dictates how much of the noise gets cut out. So if you have a really strong filter for maybe industrial work, you're going to block out most of the sound. If you use a really low value filter, it's going to just take the edge off of it and allow you to still hear things. The cool thing as a bass player is they tend to roll off the top end but allow some of the bottom end to come in. At least that's what I found with those ones. So I could always still hear my bass pretty well at a gig. So the next one might seem a little bit unusual but it's actually really useful. And that's keeping a notepad, a sharpie and a pen in your gig bag. Now the reason for this is, there's actually a few reasons for this one. Actually, you might need to write down a set list, you might need to make notes on songs and rehearsals. It could be anything. Having a notepad and some pens always come in handy. So always make sure you have those. I sometimes go another step further and that's bring in a manuscript paper pad. Obviously I read sheet music so that's fine. It's just so I can take notes on songs and rehearsals. If we're writing something, I can make notes and recreate it later exactly. Same. But if you don't read sheet music, even just having tab paper or having a notepad, it all just makes life a little bit easier. And lastly, we've got the very bass player specific things, and that's having a DI box. You can have a simple one like this, which is a Behringer one, just has an attenuator, it's actually two DIs in one, and you have the ground lift, and it's really cheap. You can get these really affordably, and they do the job. The reason you would have something like this is a backup plan. If your amp goes bad, if it's backline at the gig that's supplied, that can sometimes mean you're not using a very good amplifier. I've heard some, there's always horror stories of these things. And it's always good to have a DI box as a backup plan in case of something like that. Even a really good amplifier could go faulty. So you just have to have something as a backup plan. But if you don't want to go as simple as that, you could get a preamp pedal. And for me, 
my go-to preamp pedal is the Eden WTDI. You see this is a DI box, you could turn the preamp bit off and just use the DI and it does great. Or you could use the preamp to shape your bass tone. Now this is also really good if you're running a backline gig where you've got supplied backline. You see, you could run your sound from the preamp to the front of house that the audience will hear. And it means that all the amp's doing is providing sound for you. So if you're in that type of setup, that could be really good. Of course, if you're using the backline amp and it's providing the sound for everything, maybe a gig where the bass isn't through the PA, if you use something like this, you can still shape the sound of that amplifier to try and get what you're after. Whether that's plugging your bass into this and then running into the effects loop of the amp, or you're running it before the amplifier. I will say results vary with these types of setups, so you have to do your own thing. I wouldn't take my word as gospel on how to run one of these in your rig. You've kind of got to find what works best for you and check the manufacturer's descriptions of these things for how to run them. At the very least, something like this, as a DI box running at the PA, works really well. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you maybe found some of this useful. And remember, these are all my opinions. Yes, it's come from years of gigging and rehearsing with bands and doing session work, but ultimately this is my opinion on what I feel should be brought to a gig. I'd love to hear what you all think on this. So if there's anything I didn't include in this, any suggestions you have, please include those down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you're all suggesting and hear what you all do for gigs. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit like and subscribe down below, clicking the bell icon to be notified of more content when it comes out. And until next time, keep working on those bass faces.